Good afternoon, everyone. You are welcome to another edition of the Virtual Facts Behind the Sustainability Report series. The Facts Behind the Sustainability Report is a flagship initiative of the Nigerian Exchange Group designed to promote the adoption of environmental, social, and governance disclosure while encouraging responsible long-term approaches to investment. My name is Olutobi Onoji, and I will be the moderator for today's session with Flower Mills of Nigeria PLC as the company unveils its first standalone sustainability report. For us at the exchange, it has certainly been interesting to see more companies pay attention to sustainability reporting as a business concept. Today's session promises to be enlightening. To set the ball rolling, the group managing, the group executive, um, group chief executive officer, Nigerian Exchange Group, PLC, Mr. Oscar N. Oyema Oon, will deliver the opening remarks. Right after, the Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Flower Mills of Nigeria PLC, Mr. Omoboyede Ulusoya, will present the facts behind the sustainability report for his organization. If you have any questions on the presentation, please share these questions using the question and answer function. Questions arising from this session will be addressed after the presentation. As we inch closer to the end of the webinar, we will have the divisional head, Business Support Services, Nigerian Exchange Limited, give the vote of thanks and turn it over to Mr. Oika, Mr. Oscar Nyema to round, to round us off with a digital closing gong ceremony. So once again, I welcome you all and I now hand over to Mr. Nyema for his opening remarks. Thank you very much, Toby. And good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> On behalf of the management and staff of the Nigerian Exchange Group PLC, or NGX Group, and the entire capital market community, I welcome the board and executive management of Flower Mills of Nigeria PLC to their first facts behind the sustainability report presentation. We are pleased that Flower Mills of Nigeria PLC has chosen to leverage the facts behind the sustainability report series to launch and discuss the highlights of their first ever standalone sustainability report, which is Global Reporting Initiative, GRI, referenced and aligned with our sustainability disclosure guidelines. We count it a great success for, for the exchange and for the global capital market system. When more companies publish reports on their performance on key environmental, social, and governance indicators, as well as their commitment to creating a sustainable future. At the NGX Group, we are fully committed to fostering the growth of ESG reporting in line with the recommendations of the Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative or SSE. One of our key milestones in achieving this commitment was the unveiling of the sustainability disclosure guidelines in March of 2019. Indeed, the adoption of sustainability reporting has come a long way. KPMG's recently published survey on the sustainability reporting practices of the world's 250 largest companies by revenue as defined in the Fortune 500 ranking of 2019, revealed that 80% of companies now report on sustainability globally. When the SSE published its model guidance on ESG disclosures in 2015, only three of its member exchanges had issued written guidance on ESG disclosures for their listed companies. As of today, 56 global exchanges have issued written guidance on ESG disclosures, and the NGS Group is proud to be one of four securities exchanges in Africa that are part of this forward-looking group. Clearly, there has been a big shift in sustainability reporting and the laggards 
are being left behind. Studies have shown that sustainability reporting influences a company's performance. According to the GRI, sustainability reporting can serve as a learning process for an organization to better understand and manage its impact on people and the planet, whilst also managing risks, leveraging new opportunities, and identifying key actions for contributing towards creating a sustainable future. More so, publishing sustainability reports demonstrates a company's support for the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. For us at the NGX Group, sustainability reporting is at the core of our sustainability journey. In addition to the sustainability disclosure guidelines and the facts behind the sustainability report series, we have hosted a number of workshops in partnership with the Global Reporting Initiative to promote the practice of sustainability reporting amongst our listed companies and help them understand the reporting requirements of the sustainability disclosure guidelines of the exchange. As we transition to the Nigerian Exchange Group PLC, we would not renege on this commitment. This year, or the year 2020, sorry, was the first time that the World Economic Forum, WEF, Global Risk Reports was dominated by the environment. Climate change commitments, or climate change continues to be the looming risk and climate change failure has been described as the most impactful and second most likely long-term risk identified in the 2021 Global Risk Report. The NGX Group is pleased to be part of the Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative work stream to promote improved disclosure on climate risks and we are working to support listed companies in including climate reporting as part of their sustainability reporting circle. We commend the board and executive management of Flower Mills of Nigeria PLC for leading the charge to advance sustainability in the food and agro allied sector. In particular, we commend Mr. Omoboyede Olas Olusoya, sorry, for prioritizing sustainability at the onset of his leadership as Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Flower Mills of Nigeria PLC. I thank everyone who has joined us online today and encourage you to participate fully during the interactive session. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would now call on Mr. Omoboyede Olusoya, Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Flower Mills of Nigeria PLC, to present his organization's facts behind the sustainability report. Thank you. Um. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Oyama, and uh, thank you very much to the executive and board of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. It is a pleasure and an honor to have the privilege of presenting Flamel's inaugural um, sustainability report. Uh, first, on a on a on a road that we think takes us to where we believe we should be. We we, we pride ourselves of being one. <coughs> excuse me one of the biggest companies in the country and would like to take our pride and place in being one of those who pushes the sustainability agenda and participates fully in ensuring that our sustainability reports uh, from a guide, not just for, for, for us, but for the rest of the country as, as we move along that road now. The, the first report we're doing is a GRI reference report. We hope to move on to the core stage in the next year. And uh, as we move on that stage, we'll continue to develop uh, and progress 
um, the, the, um, with our reporting. I'll just give a, a brief outline of where we are. The report covers activities and initiatives that, that took place in the financial year that started 1st of April 2019 and concluded 31st of March 2020. As uh, Mr. Onyema alluded to in the report, we follow in his in his speech. We follow the uh, GRI initiative, which is the Global Reporting Initiative, and this is uh, part of the reference claim part of, of that initiative. We continue to uh, use as guidance the uh, Nigerian Stock Exchange Sustainable Sustainable Disclosure Guidelines that he also measured uh, mentioned in in his in his speech. And in particular, he also talked about the United Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals, which continue to play a key role in, in the reporting. Um, I'll just, uh, on, on, in terms of FMN, just a brief overview of our purpose. We are, apologies, trying to just get this into, yeah, sorry about that. I think it's, a better view for everyone now. Uh, our purpose continues to stay feeding the nation every day, and uh, as as and a strong part of of that is about our in interest in ensuring that we take food from the ground to the table, as you will see. I'll go briefly, quickly about FMN. What are our key business segments? Um, we we are likely known uh, for. Our, our role in foods, we're the, probably the biggest uh, miller of, of in, in the country. Uh, we also play significantly now as we as we are developing on, on the B two C side of, of foods with products that we're moving, including in the edible oils and fats and starches category. We are extremely strong on our agro light space. We are very big on um, backward integration, which also forms the bedrock of why um, the sustainability report becomes a, a key a key platform for us. Um, we play in the sugar segment. We have a big sugar plantation in uh, Sunti. We're developing another one in Nassau. And to support all those businesses, we, we have a string of support services ranging from transport to uh, port shipping, uh, port and shipping services. We have 18 subsidiaries and are in five key product divisions. Um, these are uh, sweeteners, starches, grains, uh, <coughs> excuse, me, <coughs> excuse me, edible oils and, and fats and animal protein. And as I mentioned earlier, we continue to uh, focus on uh, from farm to the table in terms of our desire to feed the nation every day. What is sustainability for us at FMN? Um, briefly, we are guided by our sustainability statement of contributing to the preservation of biodiversity, reducing water consumption and waste, and in particular, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, uh, a topic that is close to everybody's heart now with um, climate change. We engage in practices that optimize the use of natural resources by developing energy efficient products and technologies and by fostering innovative and co uh, creative solutions, which is a big drive for us in both uh, uh, in our backward integration processes where we look at um, heat gas uh, turbines to, to be able to, to give much uh, better um, power solutions and how we develop in local innovations, uh, um, innovation, innovative food from local products. Backward integration, where we have invested more than 150 billion over the past 10 years to, to support in particular um, the core businesses that we're in. We're, we're continually driving the, the focus of our business to ensure that local supply chain is what we use to, to drive um, our, our product category. And we also continue to engage in a, uh, our stakeholders in a multifaceted way um, to ensure that we are able to, we have what's called the freedom to operate in the territories where we operate. And also we take cognizance of our stakeholder needs and desires as we, as we um, produce and, and drive activities in the market. At FMN, from a compliance point of view, um, Mr. Oima mentioned risk management now and how, how the Global Risk Initiative is, is, is going, is being undertaken. We are strongly focused on a risk management fo uh, framework, which focuses deeply on uh, where our risks are and how we actually ensure we, we manage those appropriately. And whilst we do that, we're putting in place strategies 
and, and policies and procedures to ensure that as we highlight those risks, we manage them. Strong now amongst those risks are things like he mentioned, which relate to climate change and sustainability of our ability to work in certain stakeholder communities as well. Ethics and compliance, we have a strong FMN code of conduct that articulates and instills the need to maintain high standards of corporate values. And this is driven from the board down into the business. We are focused on, be, on, on, on fighting corruption. We have uh, a, a significant number of anti-corruption policies and we have committed ourselves to ensuring that we conduct business and ourselves fairly, honestly, and lawfully in all and every dealing that we have whether it's internally or externally. We also comply with all international and local legislation on corruption and bribery and have conducted over the last uh, year anti-corruption training and workshops for all employees and the board as well. From our, uh, from our products and our, our drive to, to feed the nation, we focus on ensuring that the, the products we put we provide, and in this case, I'm now talking in particular here on food, uh, are the best, and not just in terms of value for, for money, but best in terms of quality of product and the safety of the product. We continue to ensure that we attain a, a gold standard and uh, have the most stringent manufacturing process to ensure uh, the superiority of production. It's one thing that we're known for in the marketplace. We have uh, we have certifications by the Bureau of Veritas uh, uh, for, uh, in terms of uh, food safety system certification. <coughs> we, we have significantly participated and won at certain uh, safety initiative awards um, that, that, that drive the focus of uh, annual food uh, safety certifications. And as part of our, our quality policy, only we, we drive it not just in terms of the, the I mean, to, sorry, to drive the quality of what we produce, we have to drive the quality of the inputs. And therefore, our inputs are, are measured to high quality standards. We participate in the backward integration protest, process from our inputs, from the input side of our business in ensuring that there are, well, through support for, uh, by extension services and by products that we give, which include fertilizer, and, and seeds that the quality of the inputs that we use are of the highest standards. We are focused on ensuring that um, fortification is a tool for is a tool that we use to ensure um, the adequacy of of vitamin supply through the the, the foods that we produce. We have zero non-compliance con concerning products, services, uh, services information and labeling from any of the regulatory bodies that we deal with. And we are continue to ensure that we appropriately label our packaging to ensure that consumers are able to decide and look at the, the, the packaging, decide the, the type and nature, whether the type and nature of the food that we're putting to them meets their desires. And that stays in consonant with, in compliance rather, with NAFDAQ and other statutory requirements. As, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we have ensured that we had no 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 non-compliance in in any of the with our products in in, in the year that we are that that on the year under review, and we continue to also follow the uh, Data uh, Privacy Act to ensure that regulations that relate to that are also met, so that any data that we've collected has been reported alongside the um, data regulations that that guide us. We address responsible sourcing issues through a business partnering policy that we call a, a responsible business partnering policy. And we use a multifaceted uh, approach to ensuring that we uh, carry out regular supplier assessments, audits, and we engage with them to ensure that they're meeting the standards that we require. So the, a big drive is to ensure it's not just on the output, but a large proportion of the input, or all of the input meets our quality standards. We have uh, over in the year that we that we're reporting, 77.1 percent of all local procurements were done with payments to local Nigerian vendors. Uh, intent is to push that to as much as uh, to 100 percent in as, in as quick a time as as possible. I'll briefly go on to our ecosystem. Um, 
largely uh, we, we try and ensure that we manage our waste production and that we recycle as much of the waste that, that, that we've got internally. From our flour milling operation, a large proportion of the waste is used in the off our business so as to which generates uh, food for animal for our animal protein business and that we also sell into the market for rarers of, of animals. Um, we have just installed a wastewater treatment plant uh, with, uh, with capacity at our Golden Penny Pasta business in Igomu. We are in the process of also implementing another wastewater treatment plant at our uh, starch processing plant in Ososa. Um, once again, a drive towards ensuring uh, sustainable waste um, management. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that we continue to look at our ability to manage our power efficiently. And in that drive, we continue to look at um, power generation and our ability to use heat recovery systems because of the nature of, of, of management of, of energy utilization that that, that provides. Um, from a biodiversity point of view, we continue to ensure that the dust that we produce in the waste grain process is, is filtered and we use a, a pneumatic fan system to ensure that that environment is as much uh, dust free as possible. And I alluded to and mentioned earlier that we use weight grain waste as animal feed. On people, we continue to hire, train, promote uh, people with different, irregardless of race, color, religion, sex, age, national orientation, or origin, disability, or other classifications. Um, as far as we are, our aim is to be fully inclusive and a fully diverse entity. The board and leadership also continue to promote diversity in its membership across all its, all, all its uh, various um, decision-making and uh, governance um, uh, tools or um, means. And we have also created, uh, that's running functionally now, a strong FMN women's network and we continue to work with them towards ensuring that there's a higher gender inclusiveness. And that's now a significant part of both the management and board agenda. I'll briefly go on to our community where our drive with our community is to continue to have um, the freedom to operate. And um, to that end, we continue to invest from a, a responsibility point of view in education, um, driving vocational training in some in some areas. Um, we have a strong relationship with the University of Ibadan where we've created a George Kumantaros uh, Memorial Lecture that holds annually, as well as uh, an investment in, 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 in the Food Research Center that to continue to drive food research. We uh, also uh, actively participate in health where we've renovated uh, some dental facilities for the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. All of this, uh, once again, to drive uh, the communities that we work with and to ensure that there's some a high level of inclusiveness and cooperation uh, between us and them. In the last year as well, as we have seen, COVID has been a major part of our life and we as a, as a responsible and significant player in the, in the economy have played a strong role in uh, initiatives to, to support um, Nigerians during this period. We, form part of the coalition uh, um, that was created by, um, in the country against COVID, COVID, and we've contributed through that um, over a billion naira in cash. We have also, apart from contributing that in cash, contributed in terms of bringing in medical um, equipment, PCRs to support testing equipment um, and other medical supplies to assist during the, the process to during the year to a tune of about 2 billion naira. That's a rough uh, approach of where we are as a starting point on our sustainable journey. For us, ESG continues to form a core part of our business. Um, from A, the platform of our ability to operate happily and uh, cooperatively within the Nigerian environment, um, to a, our desire to comply with um, stock exchange requirements, which is uh, one of our aims as well, but also more importantly, from our, from our desire to be a sustainability a benchmark within Nigeria, as we see that as a strong element of, the, of business growth for us, 
and our ability to continue to play significantly well in the sectors that I have mentioned earlier. Thank you very much once again to the uh, executive and board of the Nigerian Stock Exchange for this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir, um, for your very concise, and very, very insightful um, presentation. Um, it's, very, it's very inspiring to hear a lot of the initiatives that Flower Mills has implemented and is implementing to champion sustainability across its entire um, value chain. Um, we'll go straight to the question and answer session. The questions have started pouring in. Um, I'll take them in two questions, if that's in two in batches of twos, if that's okay with you. That's fine. Great. So, um, first question that came in was from Mr. from Obiora Osokolo. He's asking, or she's asking, how does Flour Mills of Nigeria manage its stakeholders in the agricultural value chain? It manages, and that is that it has built over the years. So let me take that again. How does Flamers of Nigeria manage its stakeholders in the agri value chain that it, that it manages and has built over the years? And where are the challenges? Where are the challenges and how is the company seeking to change whilst remaining compliant under a proper governance framework? I suppose this is two questions in one. So we will take this question only from Obiora um, for this for this uh for this batch would you like me to read to read the question no no, no that, that's fine i think I, I get the gist of the question thank you very much of your well um as, as you know uh, the backward integration plans that we have uh, in, in indicate that we're strong player in the agri sector and whilst we do not pretend to be farmers we do understand and, and participate fully in the farming process and support farmers in, in that process. Our main role today has been that of an off-taker, but off-taker or uh, off-taker with um, a set of outgrower or contract farming arrangements that work on one side, with us being involved in the input side. I mentioned in the in, 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 in the brief that I gave that we also play on the, we have a, a business that's strongly um, input driven and plays in both crop protection, fertilizer and seeds. And our intent in that process is to ensure that uh, two things occur. One, that there's a quality of output because that makes a huge difference to, to the quality of products we can also produce. But two, that in doing that, there's a quality of economy for the farmer because he's able to get better yields Better yields for him means better returns. Better returns for him also mean a sustainable development of his own agricultural life. So that's the way we play. So our intent is to make, whilst we, are, whilst we want to get better quality products, we also want to make life better for the farmer to ensure that he's also enabled to continue to deliver better quality products. I hope that answers the question. Uh, yes, yes. Um, thank you very much for your response, sir. We will go straight to the next question um, from Bumi Amosu. Um, she's asked, the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted and, um, and impacted the supply chain um, globally. So is she, how have you adjusted to the new reality by ensuring there is no missing link from farm to fork? We also got a question from Victor, who has asked, what is Flam Mills of Nigeria doing to create value in the supply chain and reduce dependence on imported raw materials. Okay, on the first question in terms of um, the, the pandemic and its impact, it's, that's part of the, the risk assessment that we continue to do. No one can totally take away the, the impact in terms of uh, what it has done to supply chain. We've just, in the year that we, we measured, or uh, in the year that has passed, not the one that was under, on, on, on the reporting because COVID didn't happen in the year under reporting. We, we continue to, to risk manage as much as possible um, the supply chain and to ensure that whatever support we can give in terms of access to um, whatever extension services, whatever support the, the farming community needs, we do. And in terms of access to our ability to move those products as and when do we continue to get support from both the state and federal government in terms of um, support and ability to move the products. The second question relates to what we're trying to do in terms of our own supply chain and to move towards more locally produced or to, to be more local in supply chain. But that's a key driver for us now. 
um, we and a key platform on which we're doing the backward integration plans that we talk about, whether it's as we have in, in sugar, um, cassava today, um, palm, palm oil also. All of those are driven by a desire to ensure that our local, that the local supply chain produces as much of the products as we want. We have now also started, or not, we have recently upgraded our involvement with uh, the Wheat Farmers Association to drive aggressively um, more, as much as possible, enhance development on the wheat value chain as well, and to see how much support we can give in terms of driving growth of wheat so as to see what can be done from a local point of view. And you would have seen um, in the press recently a, a couple of uh, some articles and materials relating to how the Flour Millers Association of Nigeria are participating in the process to support that. Once again, that is likely to also ensure um, a large element of local supply chain. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, on the back of the question, or, or just your response on the backward integration, I will take a question from Bumi Amosu. She has asked, how impactful was the border closure on your business? Looking back at that policy, do you believe it was the, it was, it was the right way to go to encourage backward integration and local production? Um, second question, or oh, would you like to address that question right away? Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Okay. okay. My, my view on the, the border closure would be, I, I think we should understand what we were trying to achieve with the border closure. I, I think everyone would agree that closing borders is not necessarily what we would like to do as a country. What we would prefer would be our borders to be properly manned and for um, products that come through the border to be appropriately taxed or levied or those that shouldn't come through to come through. So the issue shouldn't be about um, border closure. It should be about let's have our borders appropriately working as they should work. In terms of support for, for local um, production, whether it's manufacturing, all countries in their ways create environments for sustainable local development. Um, we just need to ensure that we continue to, write, to strike the right balance between the goods and services that we, are, we have a certain level of competitive advantage at producing locally and those that we don't. Because if everybody in the world simply did that, then there'd be no trade. But everybody also does have to support to some level its, its, its local economy. So it's, it's striking the right balance. In terms of what has been done, we have, in, 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 in our case, we had anticipated a certain amount of impact on some of our product categories, but to date, we're not seeing um, the impact we had anticipated, is what I would say. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that response. Um, next question is from Mrs. Yemisi Ransom, Rant Ms. Yemisi Ransom Kuti. Um, she's asked, would you be open to adopting the two kilometer rule in your organization, where organizations patronize businesses and hire personnel within two kilometers radius of their businesses? Like everything, we can, we can always look at that as a target. To implement that today would be difficult. I would, I would be lying if I said anything other than that. But as a target from a local, local rule and a freedom to operate, yes, it is something that we look at. We would always look at ways to support, in particular, local businesses and the local community. OK, great. Thank you, sir. Um, to all our attendees, I encourage you to keep um, sending your questions in. Um, we'll take them. We'll take as many as many questions as we can. Um, thank you very much for your audience and your questions. I'll take the next question from George Anigbu Nem. Please forgive me if I didn't pronounce your name properly. Um, he says, "I would like to know if Flamios of Nigeria has energy transition plans. I mean." Transition, transitioning fully from unsustainable energy supply systems to clean or renewable energy. Second question he's asking is, I would also like to know if you have any plans of adopting regenerative agriculture, which all sustainability professionals are adopting globally. Okay, on the first question, yes, we are currently looking at, in particular, renewable energy as a, as a source for a significant amount of our, of our businesses. It is a transition plan because of the size and scale of the businesses and also the size and scale of the renewable business in this part. It's not an immediate transition, but yes, that, that's fully on our horizon. And uh, in the next financial year, uh, at least one or two, if not two, 
off the top of my head of our business locations will be fully renewable. In terms of, uh, um, from an agricultural um, um, point of view, moving to regenerative energy, well, in a, to, to a large extent, we practice some of that at Sunti, and it is our intent to do that as we move as we move uh, into Nasawa from a sugar um, backward integration point of view. Okay, um, thank you very much, sir. Uh, next question is from Imano Atol Atolagbe. What is the short and medium and long-term plans for flour mills towards taking full advantage of the huge opportunities that they recently launched after presents? Um, do you want to take that or? Yes. Like to... Okay. <laughs> that's a question. Well. That's, a, that's, a, that's a lecture, <laughs> not a question. <laughs> Okay, um, I, we, we, we internally think of after in two ways. And uh, so as you, as, as you rightly pointed out, there's opportunities and there's also the challenges that come with it. I mean, let's first of all deal with the, the challenges from this part. The reality is we operate in a not so easy to operate environment from a cost point of view. You're, you know, we're dealing with ports, we're dealing with transport costs, we're dealing with freight costs, we're dealing with power costs. So that in itself makes, uh, those are initiatives that um, we are having to discuss with government to see how best we can manage those costs um, to a point where we start being at least a bit more competitive on the outside, outside of the country, that's one. Two, in terms of cost management, we also internally, and we are focused on that, have to ensure that now operational efficiency and cost management is a key, key part of our, of our platform so that we, in whatever is within our control to do to manage those costs, we do, and that would make us a lot more com competitive. Three, on that, we're also driven by our look at local innovation and um, local supply chain to also ensure that the dependency on, uh, on forex for, for supply chain means our, our cost to produce then also come down. As we look at those, then it means we become competitive in being, in being able to move products across the border. So that's one leg of it, which we are fully engaged in. The second leg is the opportunity that also exists in the sense that there are markets that exist outside of, of Nigeria that are also big, strong, and powerful. That for and in those markets, the skill set that we have, the technological know-how and the knowledge that we bring, plus our existing product ca categories, are suitable for that market. We are looking at entry into those markets. So that's the that's the opportunity that I presume you're alluding to. And those opportunities we are currently looking at, in particular within West Africa, to see how best we can take advantage of that. But it's too prompt. We need to ensure that we are, first of all, protecting ourselves and being defensive enough. And with defense here, it's defensively well enough to be able to sell products at a competitive rate. And also expanding our horizon to look at markets beyond us, because we're now in a position where uh, our product cost and e efficiency allows us to compete globally. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Mr. Emmanuel Atolagwe, I hope that very lengthy response addresses your question. Because I, no I noticed that the, on the back of the question that he has asked, um, he asked uh, another question, said, what are the plans of flour mills towards boosting exports of its products, but I, I suppose I think I've answered some of some of that already. in terms of okay. now there's a there's a there's a there's another question from Mr. Isaac Olonro. I didn't get the full the full name. But this is this is a this is a question on insecurity. Um, he has asked insecurity and high inflation rates are two social crises that Nigeria is battling with today. Um, how has this impacted your sales in recent times and what that what are you doing to make the products affordable to customers whose disposable income has been eroded? Okay, um, the, the first point in, in terms of, I'll answer the second question first before I come to first. What have we done? We continue to be focused on what we call an affordability metric. So part of our product innovation spread is sitting down and looking at how best can we give value for money? How is it that we can, knowing how to well, um, mix products, how to utilize certain, certain products better than, than others, how is it that we can produce quality products at the best price, considering, as, as, as the question is, the, the consumer spending power and marketplace. And that has meant that we have got a, very, a variety of products at various price points to ensure that 
um, we do give significant value for money. And I think that is what has seen us through in, in the diff with the difficulty that we continue to see with uh, inflation and, 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 and likes in, in the marketplace. So in, in that effect, we have, we have been able to, to continue to make um, the sales, sales in, in, in the volumes that, that we would like. In terms of insecurity, the, the reality is it's it's what it's a it's a phase that Nigeria has gone through recently that has become a bit topical, and it's something that we will have to, as a country, uh, address. And we continue to seek support and get support, to be fair, from both federal and state authorities in our ability to move goods and services, and have had minimal impact, but no one can have no impact because it, it exists and it's something that we have to deal with as a country. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, very elaborate and detailed response. Um, I will take another, I'll take a question from Joseph, Josephine Okodie. Um, this one goes back to some, some, some um, concepts that you discussed in your presentation. She has asked many, she said many things for your insightful presentation. So, how is Flamio showing leadership in sustainability in consideration of the people and the environment? I suppose this is a very broad question, but the emphasis here probably will be around the leadership that the organization is, is showing and demonstrating. Uh, the, the, the easiest part of the question on showing on what we're showing is doing this, uh, which is standing up and putting our reports out. And as I said, uh, using uh, moving from uh, GFI reference to core is a strong statement that we're trying to, to make um, on our belief in, in sustainability. In terms of people, we continue to focus on, in, in particular, our, our people and our relationship, not just internally, but externally with all stakeholders. I mentioned our diversity um, issues where, as far as we're concerned, we have no bias against anyone. And we continue to recruit based on, uh, on talent and opportunity um, without without bias, we accept that we might not have we we might not be where we want to be on in particular gender diversity, and it's something we're focused on addressing. And uh, subsequent reports will show the progress that 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 we're making on that. We continue to ensure that we uh, we seek and desire the best freedom to operate possible by having the best kind of relationship with communities. When we go into communities, we're looking for outgrower schemes and contract farming relationships with those communities to drive both the economic benefits for them and for us in terms of the value that they then bring to the table. And aside from that, as I alluded to earlier, we do uh, we engage in both educational and health initiatives around those communities, once again, to support people. So if that's the question on how we deal with people internally and externally, those, those would be my answer. Well, that would be my answer. Great. Um, thank you very much. I would also like to add, um, um, you did mention um, gender diversity and gender equality. The Nigerian, uh, for us at the exchange, that is a big, is a big initiative. Um, you may know of the Nigeria to Equal initiative that we're implementing with the, with the International Finance Corporation. We've, uh, we, we're welcoming, I mean, the flower mills of Nigeria PLC to be part of that initiative. Um, for the next three, three to for the next three years, we'll be imp implementing a, a peer learning platform um, to empower listed companies um, to promote gender equality. And you're, you're welcome to be a part of that initiative. Um, we are rounding off this session. Uh, two minutes left before we close off the session. But I'll take one more question from um, Mr. Iman Obonna. As a, he's asked, as a as a food producer. What percentage of raw materials are sourced locally and what efforts have been made to improve the livelihood of rural farmers as well as the adoption of best farm practices? I think um, the second part of that question I had answered earlier when I spoke about the relationship we have with farmers in terms of how we support, whether it's um, through extension services and extension services about training and development, whether it's through um, input materials, whether it's fertilizer, uh, crop protection and seeds so as to ensure that they get better quality uh, yields. Better quality yields means better economics. Better quality yields means uh, also lead to better and better quality products means better quality inputs for us as well. So it's a it's a win-win for everybody. So that's how we, we support the farmers. In terms of the uh, percentage, uh, remember we're in various product categories. So depending on, on, on which category. So for instance, if you look at our uh, starch, um, cassava starch value chain, 
we would be 100% local, for instance. On the grain side, um, we remember we are, apart from being in maize, we're also in sorghum, soya bean, and um, wheat. Um, significant proportion of wheat is imported, yes, but a significant proportion of everything else that I just mentioned on, the, on, the, on that value chain is locally produced. So it would be a percentage based on the categories, not, not, a, not a fixed overall percentage for the, for the business. Okay. Um, thank you very much uh, for, for that very, very interactive session. Um, we've come to the end of this session now. Um, I will then I will hand over to Mr. Bola Deko, uh, the Divisional Head, Business Jet Services at the Nigerian Exchange Limited to deliver the vote of thanks. Mr. Mr. Deko, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Olutobi. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me start off by acknowledging uh, a few folks up front. Uh, the group CEO of the Nigerian Exchange Group PLC, Mr. Oscar Enoyema, OON. CEO of the Nigerian Exchange Limited, Mr. Temi Popola. Uh, the Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Fly Mills Limited, PLC rather, uh, Mr. Mamboyide uh, Lusoya. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen who have joined us across all of our online platforms uh, this afternoon. It is indeed a privilege for me to deliver the closing remarks and extend a vote of thanks at today's virtual facts behind the sustainability report, as we tend to call FBSR. We acknowledge the impactful initiatives implemented by Fly Mills of Nigeria, PLC, and our applause suddenly goes to the company's board and management. The launch of this first standalone sustainability report heralds the beginning of a new phase of transparency and public commitment to sustainable development for the company. For this, if you permit me, a truly deserving commendation goes to Mr. Paul Beredo, the Vice Chairman and immediate former Group Managing Director of Flyer Mills of Nigeria PLC, under whose leadership this sustainability uh, was started. The decision to leverage the facts behind the sustainability report platform to unveil this report certainly signals a strong commitment for continuity in the support for sustainability and effective stakeholder engagement. And for this, we specifically would like to commend Mr. Omobuye Olusoyo, the current Group Managing Director and CEO. Certainly our commendation also has to go to the corporate sustainability team at Flower Mills whose efforts ensure that the company's sustainability reporting journey started on a strong foothold by aligning with the global reporting initiative, GRI standards, and the sustainability disclosure guidelines of the NSC. In addition, the buildup of this event was centered around strong collaboration between the teams at NSC and Flyer Mills. The greatest gratitude by far has to go to the audience this afternoon who have joined us from across various online platforms and certainly globally to interact by sharing their comments and ask an insightful question. In closing, I would like to also reiterate that at the NSC, we understand that sustainability is a journey. We also understand that companies are at different stages of that journey. To this end, we encourage companies to report on the progress of their respective sustainability efforts. The sustainability report, reporting process, helps companies understand the most important sustainability issues that affect their businesses and stakeholders. On our end of the exchange, we will continue to support all of our listed companies and provide capacity building opportunities for them to grow their competence around ESG reporting. The overarching objective for us is to see more companies approach and embrace sustainability, not just from a knowledge perspective, but also realizing how much impact and value they're able to create for the stakeholders. We will continue to strengthen our collaborations with organizations such as Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative, United Nations Global Compact, Global Reporting Initiative, and Principles for Report Responsible Investment to build capacity within the market to drive the adoption of sustainable business practices across our ecosystem. We look forward to having more listed companies host their FBSR and many more sessions to promote 
the growth of ESG reporting across the exchange ecosystem. I thank you all for listening, and we would now await the closure of the market for today. Back to you, uh, Dr. Toby. Thank you very much, Mr. Adieko. Um, I would hand over to Mr. Oscar, Oni and Mr. Oscar Enoima um, to guide us to, through the closing gong ceremony. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Olutobi, and thank you, Bola, for your um, vote of thanks and closing remarks. Um, I must thank uh, Mr. Moboya Day, uh, Olusanya, for a wonderful um, uh, presentation and the expert uh, responses to uh, the questions that have been thrown at you. Uh, a number of those questions were quite um, uh, interesting, and I, I thought uh, the way you handled the questions uh, gave an insight into your expertise and uh, <clears throat> experience uh, in this area. Uh, so thank you very much, and congratulations again. Um, I think that um, you've set uh, an example, and uh, I'm encouraging other uh, listed entities, especially in the agro-allied uh, sector, uh, to step forward and um, also make their uh, presentations with regards to sustainability and how they are contributing uh, to improving the state of the human condition and indeed the state of the globe. Um, we will um, just uh, hang on for a little bit. Uh, we have about four minutes before the market closes. Uh, and, um, you know, Moboyode is going to be doing the honors of closing the market today. So we will just uh, hang on for a, a little bit. <clears throat> So GMD, while we're waiting, let me let me ask you: um, Have you taken your vaccine yet? No, not yet. Um, we're trying to get organized with um, with the with the state and um, uh, a car COVID initiative for it to be done in the next few days. So, looking forward to to doing that. Okay, that's good. I haven't taken as well. I'm looking forward to to taking it at the uh, at the right time. Yes. So, so that's what. So we're we're hoping that the initiative will allow us to um, find a structure for our workers to take. So it is at that point that I will also join them. But I'm, I must congratulate you. The, you know, uh, Kakovid has uh, done phenomenally well in uh, supporting the fight against um, uh, COVID nineteen, and uh, the capital market has uh, something similar. It's called um, the Capital Market uh, uh, Support uh, Committee Against COVID-19. Um, uh, we took a different tact um, in the sense that we donated a lot of uh, ambulances, masks, um, and uh, just some of the practical things to help people uh, fight the pandemic. Uh, but I must say that um, we don't have anywhere near the firepower of uh, the Kakobe. <laughs> All our contributions make absolute sense at this point in time. It's it's been a difficult year for for everybody. I think uh, I think I was reading somewhere that a few days ago it was just one year um, since the first lockdown. Uh, so it's been a it's been a very difficult year. So about uh, at the and at that time, all of us who could should do something, which is what I think matters most. Correct, exactly. Any any contribution really adds. So we just have about uh, less than one minute. Um, I hope you are getting ready. I would invite you at exactly 2.30 uh, to do the honors. Thank you. It's, it's, it's my pleasure uh, to, to do this uh, once again. Very, very, very 
very great to be here today and uh, presenting this and to also have the honor of doing the closing bell. Okay, it's it's 2.30. May I invite the GM to the closing bell? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, GMD, and thank you very much, our guests. Um, you know, that familiar sound uh, represents what you would have heard on the trading floor to close the market for today. And that also brings us to the close of these uh, facts behind the sustainability report. We thank all of you for your active participation, and we urge you to please continue to stay safe. Thank you, and have a nice day.